Time being six o'clock, I'll call this meeting to order and welcome everybody here with us tonight. And as we begin, I'm going to ask Jeremy Philly to send a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings on our life, Lord. We thank you as our school system uh, has started back to a new school year. We thank you uh, for the safety thus far, dear Lord. We ask that you just continue to keep our students and our staff safe throughout the school year, Lord. And we just ask that you bless everything that's done in this business, dear Lord. Father, we would honor you and honor you alone. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Second. Motion second. Uh, we do have an item of property that we'll have in executive session. Uh, we've got property on there, but let you know we are going into executive session at that time. Uh, all in favor of the agenda is presented to you, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Any uh, opposed or abstain? Our motion carries. Our first item of business we have tonight is uh, we don't have any announcements, do we? No, sir. All right. We do have a presentation, a resolution and a presentation, and at this time I'm going to ask for a motion on resolution number 2022-9. So, so Mr. Moved. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve the motion 22-what? Nine. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? All right, all those in favor of the resolution 22-9, uh, that you have in front of you, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Aye. Thank you. All right, the motion carries. Now I'll read the resolution into the uh, record. And before I do that, I'm going to ask Bill and Deborah Bryant if you would come to the front right here. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You've, been, you've been here before. You know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go sit in my seat back. <laughs> well, one might take exception, but that's all right. <laughs> all right, this is a resolution of the Board of Education of Benio County approving the naming of the radio booth of the Fitzgerald High School College and Career Academy press box, authorizing the chairman to execute said action on behalf of the Board of Education and for other purposes. <clears throat> Whereas Bill Bryant was born in Fitzgerald, Georgia and attended Fitzgerald Public Schools and was graduated from Fitzgerald High School in 1972. And whereas Bill Bryant did serve as a member of the Ben Hill County Board of Education from 2013 until December 31st, 2018. And whereas Bill Bryant has faithfully served as analyst, commentator, play-by-play -play announcer for the Fitzgerald High School Purple Hurricane football team since 1990, and whereas the Fitzgerald High School College and Career Academy Purple Hurricane football team became the GHSA state AA football champions by defeating the region arch rival Thomasville Bulldogs by a final score of 21 to seven at Georgia State Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia on December the 10th, 2021. And whereas the Ben Hill County Board of Education desires to appropriately recognize him for his years of distinguished service to our community and school system, now therefore be it hereby resolved that the radio booth of the Fitzgerald High School College and Career Academy home press box be dedicated to and forever named the Bill Bryant Broadcast Booth be it further resolved that a plaque so noting be affixed, be it further resolved that the Bill Bryant broadcast booth be christened at the first home game of the 2022 football season 
and be it further resolved that this action be spread across the minutes of the Ben Hill County Board of Education. This resolution shall be effective on the date of its approval by the Board of Education, so approved and adopted this ninth day of August, 2022. Thank y'all so much for this. Uh, Shirley, I missed sitting in the seat by you up there. And Shirley said, yes, we've got new seats since I was here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's a joke between she and I. We would swap seats, but my seat would go to the floor every time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much uh, uh, for this uh, special night. Uh, 31 years is a, is a lot of years of talking about the, this football program. I hope that I've represented this community well. I learned early that broadcasting can be something not just about football, but about this community, about the school system, about uh, our, just be positive about our program. And I hope I've represented that so well. I've had many, many hours of talking to other broadcasters, got so many friends around the state. And I hope I, hope I have let them know about this special community of ours, this special school board, this special school, and now out to this, this new school. I was the first graduating class in what is now the school we're leaving. I was in the 11th grade in this building <laughs> that was the first graduating class here, and it's so wonderful to be out here at our new facility. But again, I hope I have done a good job for y'all. I've really promoted this community through broadcasting. Uh, I learned by sitting by Miss Shirley up there that you can learn a lot from just sitting and listening. And I hope as a broadcaster we have I hope y'all have learned a lot by just sitting and listening. Uh, but thank you so much for, for all y'all that were involved with this, and Deborah's been here the whole way with me. So yes, thank y'all again. Thank you. Right. If y'all excuse us, man, we're going to go have a photo line. We're going to go take yeah, a picture. <laughs>
To the uh, minutes, I'll entertain a motion. We approve the uh, minutes from the regular meeting of July 12th. This is from open session. Make a motion to approve the minutes of July 12th. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed or abstain. Motion carries. Entertain a motion. To approve the minutes of the call meeting of July 18. Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the minutes of July 18 signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of open session of the call meeting of July 28. Motion to approve July 28 minutes. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. <coughs> All right. Do we have anybody sign up for public comments? Okay. Our right. system reports and entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. This is 7A, 1 through 5. Motion. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Paid bills list. Mr. Chairman, pay bills for fund 150 is $49,540.27. Uh, fund 100 was $2,390,063.65 for a total of expenditures of $2,439,063.65. Questions? All right. uh, general fund fiscal year date report. The general fund um, is uh, right now we're working on closing the end of the year and we will have that available in September after the books are closed. What? Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, we're, we're going through a process of closing out the year, so we don't have a fund balance report in August or September. Okay. We will at the end of September. Okay. Good. East Bloss report. Uh, Mr. Chairman and public, ELOS report $271,833.62. You guys, that is up 28000 above our average. Fantastic. That's called we bought a new high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, bring the one up. That's pretty cool. Thank you. All right. For sale of report. Mr. Newell. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, as you can see from the report, it's been very, very busy. Uh, we've had a lot of getting, you know, getting school ready. Come back. Continuing to uh, help with just, you know, I guess moving and setting rooms up from the renovations we have. But, um, you know, I guess the best, the best thing for me is uh, you know, we, we all came together and you know, we made August the first happen. And we had school, so it was, it was good for everybody. I'd like to um, give a shout out to the principals and the maintenance department and the teachers and the parapros and all the school staff, maintenance, bus, everything, for a great start to school. But these three, these three schools, the CCA, the middle school, and the primary school, they, they had a lot of work to do before we got school started. And we had, they had uh, voiced some concerns about not being able to get started on time. And, 
we said, well, August 1st is it, and we got to do it. So they got together and worked together and did it, and they all did an outstanding job. So I appreciate everything y'all did to uh, get, it, get it ready. So in those uh, middle school, elementary school, had a lot of HVAC issues. Are those pretty yeah. much uh, resolved? Uh, yes. Okay. Just, you know, they, they run over the summer, but uh, they were able to get it done in so I know at the middle school actually that next summer those will be a good bit of those will be replaced I mean so at the elementary school with that number is that anything for us to be concerned about uh, replacing units at any time yeah. soon So those are, is there a timeline to order those or yeah, I know there's a, some, always an issue of getting getting supplies. So is there a time a time frame that we're looking at trying to get those ordered or can order those? So. We uh, we have a, we had a meeting with uh, Parrish and Greg Smith last Monday to uh, go ahead and get the bid package together for the renovations for next summer and they're working on that to hopefully get those bid out in um, early September so we can get those supplies. Okay. Just have them stocked up and ready. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. And we got plenty of room to store stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll find some for if we don't. We'll need it. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions on mine? All right, thank you, Ashley. Yes, sir. Uh, athletic reports. Questions there. All right. All in favor of the consent agenda items uh, presented to you, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Our transportation request for a matter of information. All right. Next item is the uh, College and Career Academy Board of Directors update. And you got your next meeting there. Al, anything? I'll be real quick because we didn't have a meeting last month. We had the community connections meeting. I think a couple of you were there. Uh, but that went really well. Uh, Miss Dix, uh, Mr. Garber, Miss Tucker, Miss Brown all spoke. Uh, Miss Henderson and myself and Miss Clemens were there representing the school system. It went really well. We heard from uh, Madam Nutrition and. Uh, West Frazier. West, Frazier. West, Frazier. West Frazier. that's right, that's right. <laughs> which is two, two of our uh, partners at the high school. So that was good. Our next meeting is August 16th on Tuesday, and as always, you guys are invited to come um, August 16th, next Tuesday. Um, everybody's invited to come to that and to hear what the things that we have going on. Um, the one thing that's, that's big right now um, is Thursday we're having our flex workshop. We've got seven, uh, excuse me, six schools from around the state coming in here for us to teach them how to do the, the flex program. And um, that's that's gonna be a good day. We got all the agenda planned out. It's all day. Um, they're gonna all these all these different schools are gonna have their own flex program. They're gonna have the finals the same day that we have our finals, and then each group is gonna have their winner come back. Uh, and have a state flex champion. And uh, the championship for the state will be held at our auditorium. So that's going to be exciting, and I'll be keeping y'all updated. You're probably going to get tired of hearing about flex because it's about to get rolling again. So um, there's a lot going on, uh, and I can sit up here all day and talk about it. But uh, I will say that uh, we, did, we did good this week. Our, our admin staff and our teachers have done a tremendous job. Um, I'm glad we went in. When we went in on the first day of school, um, it had to be done. So uh, we, we, Dr. Sims and Ms. Jacobs and Mr. Brown, while he was he was there, we were getting ready. We um we got we got it done, and we had a really good week. Did I have any questions? 
Ms. Riley, would you remind me, please, uh, what time your board of directors meeting mm -hmm. August the 16th? Uh, it's at 10 or 11. 11. 11. 11. Thank we'll you. We try to get out of there around an hour, but sometimes we run a little over. But we'll be there at 11. I'd love if y'all come because that's where we really get to the meat of what we're doing okay. with the College of Career Academy. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Matt, technology report. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Y'all just want to touch on a, a few things uh, from last month, a little bit of lead over in August. Um, as you know, similar to maintenance, you know, after the, the schools kind of came back together, it was a, it was a scramble. It was kind of a, a mad dash to everything could back up, especially in the, the middle school and uh, primary school as well as uh, helping finish up the high school. Um, you know, so just putting a lot of those things together in. A lot of it went in last minute. Um, you know, but just really proud of my team for them coming together, both on the technical side and the instructional uh, technology side. It was um, it's just great when people come together and uh, like a family like Clemens Kim always talks about just um, pulling in the same direction um, we were definitely glad to be a part of that effort uh, some things we're working on um, just um, most of this is already complete just based on the timeline for when school started like um, distributing Chromebooks and iPads back out to the to the students um, getting Google training and support for new teachers or a new teacher orientation um, you know, we're also rolling out badges now to work with the time clocks uh, that, are, that are going in. Um, one thing where uh, I'm glad about, but also still we have a little snag, is the cellular uh, signal booster system at the high school. That system is in. However, there was one uh, component that arrived DOA out of the box so that when the installer went to fire it up, it, just was, it, would, it would empower. So that's been RMA. Um, they're they're shipping a new unit that's on its way. We expect it to be here by end of the week. Uh, also, I have the, the walkthrough with that um, installer this Friday. That's scheduled just to go through, make sure everything is as it should be, safe for the, the component that's out. But um, when this sets back, they're going to throw that in, and we'll have the system complete. And um, that was a, a big deal, as, as you know, since you've been out there. Um, prior to the system going in, it was just a dead zone, like we talked about before. So, and, you know, was, was really glad to get this in right there at the, the finish line of the school start. Um, looking ahead, uh, some things that we're now circling back on, uh, you know, since, uh, you know, we got kind of the, the, the half, you know, the got to haves in there, something that we really are excited about to be able to provide for the teachers is, um, is a platform called NetRef, and it's going to give the teachers the ability to supervise their students what they do on their devices specifically. I know I've talked about this a little bit on and off in the past where we were looking at solutions and now that we've got Chromebooks deployed, um, we feel good about this being able to be a tool teachers can use to, um, you know, blank out screens or, you know, use modeling, you know, and some, some kind of positive reinforcement and example sharing of that kind of stuff. So um, just looking forward to being able to, to roll that out and we'll have to work out kinks like everything, but um, once that's in their hands, we, uh, we expect it'll be a big benefit for the teachers. Um, also looking at uh, or preparing and, and now already into uh, our map testing, which obviously is, is uh, in full swing here at the beginning of the year. <coughs> Matt, I, I, I know that you've been extremely busy, you and your team, but I, um, I don't remember if I asked you about this before, but if I did, I'm sorry about that. I need to know where the uh, public Wi-Fi's are being located. And when you say public Wi-Fi's, we, we talked about mobile units, Wi-Fi's that we were going to get through a grant, and we were going to post them all, all over the community. So there's there's several different uh, there's several different um, I guess things that might be considered in scope for your question. Um, one, we have given out um, many many actual mobile hotspots. You know, not not a phone, but something that is a handheld type of unit. That went out to several students. Now, in addition to that, um, as a, a different provision from the state uh, DOE, we also um, asked to be opted into um, a program where they gave, they sent us these much larger units. Um, they're called Wi-Fi Rangers. Um, and we, we put some of those out in, in different locations. I can get those locations um, if you like. Now that, I will say that was not, a wildly successful deployment. Uh, the, the devices themselves, 
could only facilitate approximately 40 connections just by their technical specification. Um, and then there's also the issue of you know communicating the Wi-Fi password versus if we leave them open, what does that mean? So I think it was a, I think the the idea you know where people's hearts were in, you know from the state level were in the right place. It, I don't I just don't know that they really thought through the implementation of that. Maybe they just thought that we would figure out the best fit for for our community, and I think we try to do that, but. I will tell you that the other program, the Georgia Student Connect program, where we have actual devices that were assigned to students for them to hold on to and personally, you know, be, uh, you know, be in effect. Um, I think that model is much more effective uh, in terms of manageability, ease of use, and that kind of stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank so you. when they give when they give hotspots, um, <clears throat> is there a control limit on the amount of data that they're able to use because of you know, with those hotspots, I can get, you know, you know if, he's, if he's nearby, I can get Jeremy the password, I can give Shirley the password, and, you know, uh, uh, just trying to trying to figure out, you know, you know how, how all that all that plays a part of uh, when, we, when we do give out those hotspots. Sure, so the, the ones that, that I referenced earlier, uh, you know, it was approximately 160 or so, of the individual units that okay. went out. It was, it was through a program provided by the Georgia DOE. So again, it was something we opted into and then that, that was a provision that they gave us at no charge to, to our local district. So we sort of had to accept the terms of those, but what those are to answer your question is for each hotspot, it's 100 gigabytes per month, um, which is, is considerable, but it's not, you know, it's not unlimited. So, you know, your concern I think is valid if it reaches that point. Yeah. Now, um, again, we don't, we don't manage them because it's not really our program. We're just opted into the program. So when they come, they come fully provisioned um, and ready to go. They came with a little cut sheet that said, if you have trouble, here's a support number. You know, this, you know Georgia DOE didn't put these on, off on us and say, now you're supporting an okay, additional okay. 160 hotspots. I got you. You're welcome. You know, they said, we're going to give, give you they a just, number. They, like just a gave, they just gave them to them. We just gave them out. Correct. Right. And it's and it's for the, I mean, that's the design of the program if you if, and I can give you a website to refer to. It's not a Ben Hill County Schools initiative. Okay. It's a Georgia public school student initiative. Meaning, if we have a transfer to Irwin County, as far as the state's concerned, by the um, by the way the program's laid out and the verbiage in there, they want that to go with the student. If they're moving in and out of Georgia counties, nothing really changes as far as the view of, of the state. You know, based on that, you know, the decision making for them being assigned, they want it to go with them. For things like um, homework app, um, you know, coverage and stuff like that. So, what's the criteria for receiving one of the hotspots? The eligibility of the program is based on um, it's based on uh, like low income housing, things that are already part of government infrastructure, uh, and so it's squarely and solely based on address. Meaning, there, there's no other criteria if you are at one of these designated addresses designated by the state DOE you're eligible if your district has opted in and you're eligible they send us that that number okay thank you okay any other questions mm -hmm. mr chairman yes sir uh why are we on on moving the service we just uh, had an update today. Matt and I talked about that. Um, we have a, a date scheduled with a Windstream to come in and move the uh, wireless infrastructure on September the 26th, I believe. And um, that'll be, uh, it'll as long as our electrical um, gets done, um, we'll just move that and we'll be ready to roll. With, with all the rain that we have had, do we have any issues? We have had, Ashley has had to put some tarps up on top of the roof because the water runs down into that room. Um, so we are managing that with tarps right now and we're checking on that daily, especially after a rain to make sure that it's not um, moving into our server system. But uh, I think the fix that he has right now has been um, a legitimate fix. And you know, it's really about all we can do right now with the way the building is. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. Uh, Mr. Webb, curriculum and instruction. All 
right. We've been extremely busy. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Good. 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 All right. And under professional development, uh, June 20th through the 22nd, we sent 26 of our educators to PLC at work in Orlando. For, we're dedicated to the PLC process. July the 19th, I provided all new educators to our system professional training on the fundamentals of the PLC process. July the 29th, all certified staff met at the high school for professional development, Kenneth Williams. Uh, we want to thank uh, Dr. Sims for uh, getting Kenneth Williams here. He was awesome. Um, August the 2nd, I provided training to all teachers at the primary school regarding culture, professionalism, the PLC pro procedures and processes, collaboration, and what it really means to be a team. On August the 4th, I provided that same training to the elementary school. Uh, a lot going on. Uh, assessment, we're getting all our pre-assessments pre done, our map done. Uh, cadence done, growth measure, all that's being done this week, next week, the following week, uh, so we can find out where our students are. Uh, curriculum, um, all the instructional coaches, RTI specialists, and teams of teachers, we realign the ELA curriculum. Uh, we add a lot more uh, meat to the, to the ELA standards. Uh, they uh, categorize those as our primary standards that students have to know, secondary, and then maintenance standards, things we want to maintain over a long period of time. I met with the Algebra 1 teachers this summer, and we aligned their curriculum. That went very, very well. Uh, we actually found some things in the guidance documents that we needed to address in what they were teaching. Um, DHP is working on developing a step-by-step -step plan to assure students meet writing standards at appropriate rigor. And uh, the elementary school, the target analytical reading, um, and they're also uh, targeting writing, writing skills and they're, um, they're just working on just the writing and reading and being able to internalize what they're reading. The middle school is focused on improving writing skills, especially grammar and precise language, and working toward building up basic math skills. I've met with those math teachers. Uh, the high school, the ELA teachers there, are really, really working really hard. They've had conversations with me about focusing what they're what they're teaching uh, to make. Uh, they want to move a lot more of their twos and threes on milestones. Uh, important notes: We had a great turnout at Open House. Mm -hmm. uh, students are back in classes receiving instruction. Uh, our PLC process is in place and, and running uh, pretty effectively. We still got a lot of training to do there. Um, RTI is being discussed and implemented, especially our tier six two services. And of course, we're going to send letters home to all our parents explaining that process. Um, and uh, of course, K five is going to continue to improve how we report out to our parents because our goal is to improve our communication to our parents. Um, the system wide monitoring process has been redesigned. Uh, we've gone more for the meat of it instead of um, quantity of observations. All our observations with the teachers now are going to require the observer to meet with the teacher, um, not just in TEKS, but in our observations, looking at curriculum and instruction. And talking about uh, professional learning teams, I want to make a shout out to our fourth grade math team. Um, they've already looked at last year's data. They've already put in place their tier two services. They put their win time in place. They're ready to go. <laughs> in just a little over a week. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, any questions? Thanks, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. right, moving in new business, you have your summary of purchase orders that are over $10,000. Any questions on those? Take it since we have moved into the high school. This is kind of winding down. The reason we were doing this and actually this kind of stuff. this is just for curriculum um, purchases, and this yeah. is a school system wide. Um, but the yeah, if that, reason we set up this process right. was to get stuff and yeah. get down. We're kind of winding down with we this. Are. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. Next item, we have a presentation uh, tonight by Sue and Bill Rosher. 
Uh, she wanted to come and talk to us about their museum and some museum artifacts and has come bearing gifts. And uh, she wanted to do about a 15 minute presentation to us. And we'll, we'll do that because anymore you're going to have to pay for the tour. And get the full, you're going to, to get the full deal if you do that. So, Miss Sue, come talk to us, please. First of all, thank you so much for inviting us to come to chat with you about our museums. One of them is finally completed after seven years. Our kitchen, vintage kitchen museum is now open. And for those of you who have attended already, for those of you who have, we certainly want to thank you for your participation and support. It's been a long time coming, but we really are thrilled, way beyond everything I had hoped would happen with the participants that's come. We've had uh, several classes already come from the school, including Lori Brown's art class and Brent Whitley's class. And we had an amazing surprise but because we have hosted bilingual classes. Now, I can barely speak a good Southern accent. <laughs> or some of the other languages that came through. But the amazing thing is when people get into this museum, because we are an immersion museum, we're not, most museums are glass case museums. You know, you view something through glass. And if they are a period room museum, lots of times you stand at the doorway and you can look in, but you can't go in. But we are an immersion museum where you actually are invited to come sit at the kitchen tables. Now, our kitchens are a thousand percent authentic. We didn't want to create something that was similar to uh, a Disney World where a lot of things are resin and plastics and replicas. Everything we have in there is the real deal. So we refer to it more as a time travel experience as much as it is a viewing experience. Um, the vintage kitchens take several turns and twists. When you come in, there is an 1890s, 1900 general store uh, that has about 2,000 items, including four different uh, venues in the museum uh, because uh, in the general stores of the past, you had, it was like a department store. And when you came to town, sometimes the poor curator of the, or the uh, the gentleman who literally ran the general store just changed hats and he became the dentist and he became the postmaster and he became the justice of the peace and everything else that he could possibly do. Well, our museum is a split level design. Uh, it takes up two buildings on Pine Street. We are involving right now there's seven buildings all together. And we are hoping that we create not only uh, scenario for our students to be able to observe the past on a full-time basis. And, and when I say full-time, I mean where they literally come in and we're hoping to not only have the students come, but also to involve the high school children in it um, as part of the curator program, the docents, which will come and share the museum with younger students, as well as hope the culinary arts because one of the things that I'm going to pass this out to but you know what before I do that let me introduce you to my husband this is Bill Roger an Australian so talk about accents we got another one here and my general manager who is based in Edgar and he's from England so we've got lots of international uh, elements in here um, we're going to pass this basket around I'm going to pass it to you and if you all will help yourself What's in here is a sample of some of the ways we're trying to have students and participants who come to the museum not only see it, but also taste it. This is a recipe from 1875, and it's called a brown sugar oatmeal cookie. And when I first made this, the first time I translated the recipe, and when I say translated, it's because it really was a handful of this and a pinch of this. It's not a precise measurement. I did it using contemporary aluminum baking pans. Big mistake. <laughs> because they were baked on steel pans. Well, when you put a steel pan in the oven, 
the first thing that happens is that steel gets hotter than the aluminum. And the bottoms are not burnt. They're caramelized sugar. Because in the cookies are a combination of honey and molasses and cane sugar. The inside of the cookie stays soft and moist. And they cook in less than nine minutes. So you can imagine uh, what a treat it was in 1875 for you to get something like this out of a wood-burning stove, which didn't necessarily have a great control to control the heat on it. So when you taste them, and I invite you to, to enjoy, um, the bottom is not burnt. It's a caramelization, and that was the way they literally planned it because of the implement, which was the cast iron stove that they were working with. We have brought some of the artifacts from the kitchen museums here, and I know I only have 15 minutes in blue I could talk to you about all this stuff forever. Um, just to show you, and I'll just show you some of the highlights. Um, no, this is not an injection for a very large person. This is actually a sausage stuffer. Um, this is really an interesting piece. Truly, some of the pieces of the past this is over 128 years old, but look at the design on that kettle. Uh, we have set up in the kitchens, there are kitchens that represent the influences of the different cultures that literally brought their tradition and their recipes to us, and all of these literally merged into what we now know as southern cooking. Well, we have done a British Isles kitchen, Mm -hmm. This sits in there. This was actually made in Scotland, and it's a combination of copper. But as I said, the design elements are like over Just look at that. It's so <laughs> contemporary. I'm surprised if you're one, you know, we the design. Um, a lot of the pieces in our European kitchen, from our soapstone sinks to the stove from Austria, everything is real. Nothing is made to look like, and for the most part, the collection that's in there is about anywhere in my possession, I would say, goes back about 40, 45 years. So it's taken a long time to put this together. And if I had been fortunate enough to have children, it would have been easier. I could have just left the children, but there are no children. So being a teacher for many, many years, and I know how very important it is with budgeting, what you can do with students, and where, even though you want to expose them to the whole world, you don't have the opportunity or the finances. So Bill and I thought, when we first discovered Fitzgerald, we didn't even know what Fitzgerald was when we first heard about it 25 years ago. But the town's idea and premise of bringing and unifying some of the elements that form the stars from the Civil War just seemed to me weird. I had always wanted to do a cooking show, and this seemed like the perfect venue to set um, not only a vintage kitchen museum. By the way, we are the only vintage kitchen museum in the country. Now, we're not the only uh, recreated village, like the Agarama has buildings. But if you go through it, it's not divvied up with the decorations or what, what they're calling decorations or the implements that are authentic to the period. This, if you go in the 1910 kitchen, pick up a fork, it's 1910. Um, <laughs> the general store has over 2,000 pieces, including the pocket theory. We have the first barber shop uh, from Madison, Georgia, 1873. We have the Sycamore Post Office in there with the original postmaster's desk. Uh, there's a barber shop. There's also uh, a pharmacy, a compounding pharmacy. So it's not just and experience physically. It's also a walk back in time to understand what life was back was like or back over 100 years ago. The general store goes from 1890 to about 1905, and the Edwardian tea room is 1910. And many of you may not know it, but it was the tea rooms that were actually the equivalent of the Underground Railroad to get information out to women who were seeking the right to vote and had to do it literally in many cases right under their husbands and brothers and fathers' noses <laughs> because they didn't necessarily want women to have the right to vote. So I hope that you will all come and visit and we're hoping that we are now 
now that we're open, that we can have as many students come through as possible. We have been approached already by several school systems, even ones out of state, like Florida, who have heard about it. And it's amazing. We have not done any big advertising. We had a wonderful article on February 2nd in the newspaper. But basically, it's all been people who have come, and the next thing we know, they're calling up saying, my cousins are coming. Can we please have a tour? Uh, we've had two bilingual classes, and as I mentioned before, it's incredible. For people who have their own culture, and then to come and see things in other cultures of the same time period, how similar those things work, well, it's a wonderful, not only educational experience, but also pretty entertaining. And believe it or not, the biggest trouble we have is not getting people in getting them out. Because once they get to some of those kitchen tables, yes, I had a gentleman say, if you could just bring me a cold glass of buttermilk and a nana sandwich, he said, I will stay here for the next two days. So maybe we need to open up the restaurants. Um, when you see some of the things here, I'm only going to highlight just two things because I know I don't have a lot of time, but I just wanted you to see these. These are part of the general store offerings. And there was a service in some of the general stores to create wooden sole shoes. Most of this came from uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch area in the United States, but it all uh, originated in uh, Germany and Holland. And they would mold the foot in a plaster and mud combination, make the mold, and then they would carve. This is wood, the bottom of this. This is leather. When I got these, I had never seen what was done like this before. That, see these marks on the bottom? Well, I thought that had something to do with maybe strips of leather. No. Picture horseshoes. They actually had iron horseshoes on the bottom to save the sole, because it was very expensive to have the sole made <laughs> that pictures look. When we have students in there, I can tell you, the first thing you want to do is try them on. <laughs> uh, we try to not only incorporate the different uh, culinary pieces, but also in the general store, everything that involved like things like this seems very common. This is a grater made out of a piece of tin with nail holes punched through it, and that's what you grated the potatoes and your knuckles. <laughs> made literally a, a potato, uh, potato pancake. <laughs> to tell you that we've gone crazy to make everything authentic, I can tell you we were very well blessed when I had a friend call me and say, are you still going to do that crazy kitchen idea you want to do? This was like 10 years ago. She said, because a friend of ours just inherited his grandfather's lithography collection. But she said, you're going to love this, and you're not going to believe it. She says he had he designed the labels for pan, pan goods, which when things became canned and you could go buy them rather than put them up in preserves. And he said there's over a thousand labels. So we had them put on pans. These are the original labels, and I can pass one of these around for you just so you can see it. Uh, they truly are amazing. And just grab it by the rim. The paper is original. So they date back to 1896. And every kitchen, when you go and open a cupboard, it actually has the authentic canned goods from that time period. No, no, not, the, not the contents. <laughs> no contents. We're not going to tell me poison here. Uh, but that's how I would say the authenticity of it is beyond what you would normally see. Now, you see some pieces of the African art here, and we have a wonderful, wonderful advocate. We've had so many of you being so supportive, because as I say, when the, before the COVID hit, it was still five years in the making to do this. Um, the African art has been seen here. First show is Shirley Brooks, who was there with me. Um, we've done it. Believe it or not, it goes back to 2006 when we were trying to arrange to have it on exhibit in a permanent facility where we could rotate. The collection is fairly large. It takes in most of the Western 
uh, countries of Africa. Um, many of these pieces date back several hundred years. The oldest piece we have uh, is a stone carving of a, an ancestor figure, and that's over 500 years old, and it's a whole block of stone. It's amazing. What's here, this is just a small sampling. How many of you have seen the uh, series Game of Thrones on television? Do you remember the White Walkers? Yes. The characters, the White Walkers from the north? Well, this is from the Dugong tribe, and the White Walkers were modeled after the configuration that was used by the Dugongs to create a relic that literally venerated the ancestors. So this is what was the model for what they used. And they actually had called several years before they ever got to it, asking if we had any of these because they wanted to do something. Well, what they did was make the white look like this, which is pretty unusual. <laughs> now, there are bowls here. There are cooking utensils. And we have finished phase one of the museum, the kitchen museum. Phase two is going to have a full African kitchen. It's going to have a Mexican kitchen. It will have all of the different ethnicities that contributed to what we now call Southern cooking. I wanted to do something that not only paid tribute to all of the different cultures, but also to all the different styles of cooking. Uh, this pot over here, you're welcome to come up and see these later. Um, this one is carved out of of uh, uh, metal, and the, I mean wood, and the other one is done out of terracotta. And these are such treasured pieces that even when they, this one is wood, when it's split, and I'll just show you here, you can see the repair. See the repair? And these would be handed down from one family to the other. Now, I started to say before, and I interrupted myself about the fact that we are very fortunate to have Philip J. as chairman for the Colony Museum's effort and museum board to bring the African art to the old Masonic Lodge. We're hoping, we've had enough interruptions with COVID that I hope it's gone forever, or at least kind of stays away. Uh, we're open, hoping to have it open by February, and that will be involved two floors with a rotating exhibit. Do you want to say anything about this? Just very briefly, um, a little egg on my face. I, I just went out to the new school. I, I was not a fan of the new school. Um, but in fact, I wrote a couple articles in the paper criticizing the board, whatever, for the school. I was wrong. All right. The, uh, Market. What we've got there is one of the most modern, I mean, attractive opportunities. We it, it distinguishes Fitzgerald and, and Ben Hill County in a way that we haven't been distinguished before. Uh, in the same way, the opportunities that Sue is presenting us with of having the, I mean, imagine a billboard, two billboards on the expressway. One talks about the blue and the gray, the Civil War, uh, and all of that. The next one is the, the African art. That's going, that contrast is going to, that's another way we will be unique. Think about students, juniors and seniors, who are docents or guides for giving tours to the museum. Us partnering, whether it's with all of the stuff that Sue's got. She's got a dress collection. One of the dresses in it is, was at Abraham Lincoln's inaugural ball. I mean, it, it's the opportunities here for us to distinguish ourselves. Uh, and I'll close with that. One, one other comment, though. This is the first time Juan Medellin and I have agreed on anything. <laughs> and I wanted to take that. His he said enthusiasm the same thing. is infectious, and, and I'm most grateful for that as well. All right. Thank you. Philip has been a great supporter of all of these museums, as well as a lot of others of you in this room, and I so, so definitely appreciate it. I have to tell you that this is what I hope.
will just be beginning uh, creating an area in Fitzgerald that will be a magnet for tourists and help our economy tourist-wide in offering something that they cannot see any place else. And on that note, I will just announce to you something that we are planning. We haven't got it all worked out. As a matter of fact, we just all came up this week. We are hoping that all the museums will join together and we will be able to put on the first annual Madrigal Dinner, which will be a 12-course meal. And Madrigal Dinners in Europe were always meant to celebrate 12th day of Christmas, the ending of the new year, the welcoming of the new year, and giving thanks for what the land has provided to literally feed and take care of the, its inhabitants and countries. This will be a wild dinner. And it's wild in the sense that it will be wild hogs and wild turkeys and venison stew uh, and things that would have been served over 150 years ago. And it will be a 12-course meal. It will be limited. Uh, we're hoping to hold it at the pillars. Uh, we haven't solidified everything yet. And we're hoping that the museum also, the Jefferson Davis Museum, will come in on it as well as the African art, art kitchen, and the food. So if you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. But thank you so much for inviting us. And let's hope we can get our students to all come here so they can take advantage of this. Because this truly is an experience that they'd have to go to Atlanta or the Smithsonian because these things will never happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're just going to leave these with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will be in the museum, and the museum collection will rotate. Uh, we are doing a five-year commitment to the museum to get it off the ground, and we will have all sorts of different artifacts, from the weaponry to the masks to the uh, fertility pieces, and you got to watch those when you come in. They may have great power. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bill just said I should tell you that some of these pieces are so big that um, he had to design the pedestals to hold them up. We, we thought we could just order pedestals from the catalog. Forget it. Um, don't forget, African art was not done to be put on pedestals. It was actually a piece that was used in ceremony and a piece that became part of the existence of the tribe. So a lot of these pieces are carved out of a whole tree. And they have a wood in Africa called iron wood. Well, that nomenclature is perfect. We have a piece that's only this big that weighs 200 pounds. That wood, you, you, I, I don't even know how they carved it because it's so dense you, and, and heavy you can't get into it. Well, some of these pieces are house posts and they stand, what, about nine feet? Nine, ten feet. Ten feet tall. I mean, this is really an unusual collection of a culture and their, their work, not necessarily for the artistic value of it, but for the fact that most of it honors the ancestors. So it, it's a, a really a great look into another culture and another way to understand it. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate y'all sharing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. Our next item is uh, we have a recommendation uh, on tennis court usage and request for approval for a fundraising event and in order for us to discuss this I'm going to entertain a motion we approve motion motion second second all right now discussion how are you back on <laughs> we're not going to let you just you got to talk about it I know I'm talking about it but I wrote it so I should be all right you still the coach <laughs> do what you still the coach Oh, well, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I'm a community coach now. Talk about it. Anyway. Right. I, I think I was the coach out of necessity, um, but now we've got somebody that's more than capable. Mm -hmm. So we got a good, good right. coach coach this year. Do well. Um, all right, so if you remember last year when we thought the courts would be ready, I asked uh, permission to do a fundraiser in honor of of my friend that graduated a little bit after I did, but um, Mandy Weeks Mumford, uh, y'all approved that. So 
this isn't really about that tournament because um, basically we're gonna I bought a bench with the Booster Club funds and uh, we're gonna put a plaque with her record on it and uh, just set it right on the girls number one court outside the court so people can sit in it um, and like I, I talked to Miss Clemens and Dr. Sims is you know if we decide to move it we'll give it to her, to her family or whatever but for right now I think it's a cool thing and when I talked to her family about the possibility of doing a fundraiser and using her uh, the dedication to um, to raise money for the tennis program the family was like yes that's exactly what she wants you to do so uh, we're using this dedication of the bench to draw people to Fitzgerald to come be a part of the, the tournament that we're going that we'd like to put on that's the portion that I would like to talk to you about um, basically having a tournament it's uh, going to be a fun, just a fun day, music, food, tennis on the new courts. Um, you'll see the estimated expenses for the, the season. You'll see it's really, really high. Uh, we got to buy a storage shed out there. And, um, you know, rather than ask for funds uh, from the school to do that, we figured Bush Club could do it, but I think we can make some good money on this. <coughs> so um, we're not asking for you to, to fund, you know, the, the shed. We're going to buy the shit uh, if we can put on this, this fundraiser. Um, last year I, I fed them. Uh, it was about $1,500 to Because every every single match was out of town, uh, if you remember, because we were on the road uh, every time. So that number might be a little high. I know it's a little high. I, I don't know if we're going to have to pay for bus drivers, but that's on there. Um, I always give them, uh, build in a little extra for shirts reward shirts and maybe other expenses uh, uniforms we look good we, we, we might not have played good all the time but we look good uh, so we had about three uh, almost four thousand dollars in uniform the utility building and the bench uh, that the booster club paid for is already i've already paid for that it was five hundred dollars so you see it's a pretty good chunk there but that won't be all the way if you're going up some that whoever's controlling is there uh, okay all right, so the, the fundraiser will be basically just for fun, doubles tournament. So y'all can come and say, you pay your $100, mm -hmm. and we'll pair you, Miss Shirley, with Alyssa Gamble. And that's your partner for the day. And you're going to play at the play. tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Gary, he'll, he'll get Carly Gamble. You know, okay. we'll, we'll just divide up, okay. and that's your partner for the day. So it's just a fun tournament. You see a youngster will be paired with grown up okay. and I define youngsters and grown up. You're gonna play at least three matches. Uh, and then you know you got the people who are gonna be a little more competitive. Um, bring your own partner. Me and Jeremy might want to take the tournament. So me and Jeremy will uh, take on all comers. So it'll be two tournaments, a uh, hundred dollars a piece, and I think the people that we that I suspect to be in attendance, Roger. Roger knows the new Mandy really well. We'll get a lot of people come through this. Um, so uh, I think we'll make some money off of that. Um, the, the tournament will be held at the, the new tennis courts, of course. Uh, the activities of the day, we'll have the tournaments, we'll have food trucks and music. We're just gonna have a big old party out there, is the plan. Uh, now here's, here's where we're gonna make some money, uh, hopefully. I don't want to name the complex, but don't get it confused. What I want to do is every court you've ever been to, you'll see court one, court two, court three. When we go to a to a um, to a location to play tennis, they'll say, "All right, our number ones are going to play on court number one." You know, number number one boys play on court number four. So what I want to say is, number one, play on. Let's say, you know. Uh, go play on court number one, the one that's sponsored by Fitzgerald Automotive Group. So I want to charge $500 to name that court every year. Um, and the, the following year it'd be $400 uh, until the sign has to be replaced. And I and I really think I can, I can get that uh, from community members. I, I pitched this idea to a few people and they said I'll do it. And that's already three people. So three of the courts mm -hmm. could be sold right now. So that'll make us quite a bit of money because we got eight courts. Um, the other thing that, that I think would make us a lot of money is uh, name on the sponsor board. You know how the football team has a board and you put the names of everybody who, who joins the Bush Club, that's 250. 
Uh, so those will get named on the sponsor board. And uh, I, I'm going to skip that part because I'm going to get down to it in just a second. The, um, I guess I need to go ahead and talk about it. But the Booster Club <laughs> member and family access to the course. So what, what I got in mind here is I want to make the tennis team, the tennis program, a, a revenue-generating sport because that's that just doesn't happen. That's It's not a revenue-generating sport. We've got the new courts out there. We've got a community that likes to play tennis, but we don't want to open it up to everybody to just go out there and have their way with their courts. I, I think everybody in this room is probably against that um, because I think you'll have skateboarders out there. You'll have a lot of you know stuff that shouldn't be happening. So what I'm proposing that we do is we have um, tennis court monitors and the athletic director, the principal, and the coach will set aside, like say I would be a tennis court monitor. Gary would be a tennis court monitor, okay? So we set up booster club hours. So like on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from six to nine is booster club hours. So me or Gary or tennis coach or somebody that has been designated to be in charge will be there during that time to make sure all rules are followed. And before everybody leaves, they lock the courts up and we move on. So if you join the Booster Club in any of these matters, you get uh, access to the courts for one year. So you don't really get just free reign. Uh, we will update you know, on social media when the Booster Club, Booster Club hours are and then you will come be a part of that night or Saturday or whatever. Okay. So I put a lot of thought into this. I don't know if I missed anything. Um, I don't think I have, but if if you have any questions, I think it's a good way for us to make money. Um, maybe we make enough where, you know, we can, uh, you know, take the money that the tennis team usually gets and put it somewhere else. My whole objective with being the CEO of the College of Career Academy is to put these kids in real world experiences where they have to make things work. And this is just another example of how we've got an issue. You know, tennis is not a revenue generating sport. We get $750 boys and $750 girls. That's not going to cover what our girls and boys want to, as far as uniforms and what they need. So let's figure out how to do it. And I think this is a good way to do it. So. Any questions? Okay. Yes, I was thinking about the insurance part of it. If somebody gets hurt out of it. You know, I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's the same as it would be here. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the whole world was on those courts when they were open. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, I guess that's a question for Tony, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think that's uncommon for just random people to play on. I mean. The, the re, you know, if, if our course was on the highway, I don't know how you could really stop people from being going out there like these were. Um, but I, I just, I just don't feel comfortable with just every day everybody going back behind <coughs> that school and doing, you know, that's why I think there needs to be monitors. But as far as the insurance question, I, I, I didn't really think about that because we had the same issue over here. They might have to sign a waiver. Of well, that, that's a good idea. I mean, if you are a member and you have any business at all being there, you got to sign a waiver. Mm -hmm. But that that might be a solution. Yeah. Right. I think it would be handled just like we do when we have youth camps in the summer. We don't carry insurance that covers all those kids, but they sign a liability waiver, basically saying that if we get hurt during this camp on this facility, we don't hold the coaches, the school, <laughs> the Hill County Board of Education, etc., so forth, liable for any injury. I'm sure you yeah. Well, the campus is also limited access anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yes. it is. <coughs> so you'd have to have that monitor <coughs> to even get in the facility. Hmm. Okay. And when I pitched this idea, Dr. Sims and I, he was like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. Because I didn't have the monitor <laughs> idea. And we sort of brainstormed and that's what we came up with. I think it's to house credit, if I may, tennis, he keeps saying it's non-revenue generating. That's nobody's fault. It's There's no tennis program in the state that's revenue right. generating. Right. You don't charge to get into a tennis match like you go a football game, basketball right. game, baseball game. So there is no way for them to make money 
but his heart being in the right place, trying to do what's right for these kids, you know, we challenged him, all right, you got to come up with a way to do this. And, and I think he's put together a, a really good plan and tried to cover as many of his bases as possible. How many, um, how many students do we have that play tennis at this time? And um, there was like 20 the last two years. Are you and showing growth in that? I mean, no, because no? that's what we yeah, had over there. there. We, we didn't even have a boys team hardly. We had to forfeit had over half our matches. Because so you're planning have. on expanding? Now that we've got, if we're going to have a good tennis program, mm -hmm. we got to have, we got to be out there playing with these kids. The, when I was in high school, Roger will tell you, we were good. But it was because the adults practiced and played with us. I mean, the, the, we had uh, Mary Frances Cantrell, Wynn Davis, Bo Balls, they were down there every night. And that's why we were good, because all the adults played. And we go play with the adults. And no, our tennis program, we had 20 girls, that, 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 that's, that's a lot. But um, it, it's, we're not even good. And it's because they don't play. And, it, and you know, I've been taking them down there um, since Miss Clemens gave me permission to go out there. And we're already seeing differences for the ones. And we've invited everybody who's ever played to be on the tennis team to come. But a few of them have come, and you can tell the difference already. So I think our tennis program will grow now. But if we lock the gate on those tennis courts, and the only time we use them is when we use them. No, our tennis program not ever going to be any good. Thank you. So it's not really a, a school deal, it's a community deal. The community's got to play tennis in order for your school to play tennis. Okay. To be any good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you play tennis when you're three and four years old. Yeah. Getting started. Okay. We talk. Exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Sounds like exclusive. All right. All those in favor of the uh, recommendation and the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Thank you, Al. Sorry. All right, next item of business is a recommendation for approval of a health clinic site renovation. And for the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion we approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right, now discussion. That'd be you. Well, uh, back last year, you all uh, went after a grant with Merck with uh, Emory for a student health clinic. And we got the initial $10,000 for the uh, planning of that. Mm -hmm. And then once we uh, had picked a site, which took a little while, um, we uh, applied for the rest of it and got $50,000 and it's actually ESSER uh, CARES 3 money that um, will actually fund this um, and, perfect time, huh? and it's man perfect time and so this is a great opportunity for our um, students and our staff and um, other folks to uh, be able to have access to health care um, in our school district and it would be um, housed at the middle school um, that is kind of a center, central location between the elementary and primary and middle where all uh, most of our student population is. And um, they would be able to walk in and it would be a entrance on the back side so they wouldn't have to come through the gym doors. It's right behind the concession stand at the middle school, um, the actual um, room is. And so what they've asked us to do is to, um, you know, get these exam rooms and the provider office set up. Um, uh, the bathroom's already there, and they'd have to put a sink in the uh, vaccine room. But they'll be able to get vaccines there, uh, some types of uh, medicine there, and they'll be able to be seen, you know, pretty quickly. If a nurse refers them there, they'll be able to go and get seen, and we hope that it'll help our attendance and um, our staff attendance, our student attendance, um, you know, because with COVID, um, we've had, you know, a lot of people who've had to be tested. They could be tested at this um place here and it's just a great opportunity for our community and this is a big push by the state right now um, there's a lot there's I don't know how much more funding they've released um, for people to apply for this year but this is a, a project that is going on in a lot of school systems 
what type of provider will be there? Um, it'll be South uh, Central Primary out of mm -hmm. Osceola. Uh, doctor, they'll staff it. Yeah, Dr. Connor will stop staff it. He'll be there sometimes. And um, not Dr. Connor, I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, Hunter. Hunter, Dr. Hunter. Hunter. Forgive me. Um, Dr. Hunter will be there, but there'll also be a nurse practitioner there, okay. and um, they will uh, staff that. Well, we talked with them about three or four years ago. Yeah. Right. And we were looking at the the pre K. Pre -K. I mean, pre -K. Pre -K. We were looking yeah. at pre K. Yeah, long book traffic. Yes. But okay. one of the things with this is it had to have to have students on the site and um, pre K does have students on the site, but that was I guess that was never um, followed through on. So that when Bonnie applied for the um, grant with Emory, um, we just had to pick a site and we have a committee that meets monthly and uh, we uh it's a it's a great opportunity for so us this building already exists this building mm -hmm. yeah this is inside the school this is inside the middle school where is that you know where the gym is in the middle school yeah. there's the concession stand mm -hmm. there's a hallway that goes right through there and there's a it used to be the old iss room when i was a the principal there but uh, it already has a bathroom and an office and all we're going to do is put some partitions up, um, walls, and put some sinks in and just kind of renovate it um, to uh, make it uh, student friendly. And we also did this uh, door access outside um, so they would not have to enter our building and there will be a sidewalk that comes from right there where the buses load. There will be a sidewalk that you walk up to um, to get in on the outside instead of coming in on the inside. The outside or the backside? Backside. Okay. If you look where the ag or the band room is there, it's uh, down right where the greenhouse is. Yeah. So I'm not understanding you to say that this clinic will be open to the public as well? It'll be open to, yes ma'am. Um, as far as um, revenue being generated, or, or the children, how are they going to pay? Do they use their insurance? They use their insurance. Just our our people general. use ours. Uh, yes, ma'am. It's uh, just whatever um, their ins insurance is. Okay. So we're just putting up the space. We are. Yes. I mean, they're they're running it. And then uh, Dr. Hunter and all them will get. I think it's a sixty thousand dollar grant to actually put uh, everything that they need in here. Oh. So uh, it's about a hundred ten, hundred and twenty thousand dollar grant total. Um, that we won't have to pay anything for. Well, uh, our students from the CCA oh, be yes, able to participate. Okay. Hours of operation? I think it was uh, 8 to 4, if I can remember. It'll be during school hours and in the summer, too. It'll still be open during the summer as well. Oh, that's another reason for that outside yes, door. Mm -hmm. okay. So all the revenue goes to uh, South Central? Yes. I mean, they're, they're the they're the provider. They they do all that. Yes, sir. So are they paying anything for the space? Pardon? Are they paying anything for the space? No, sir. All this is grant uh, money, federal grant money. We're just providing opportunity. Yes, we're just providing opportunity. Contractual. We're just doing it year. I mean, what what kind of longevity? I mean, we're hoping it's there forever, but. I think that is when you have the space and you have the doctor that's providing the service. I'm sure as long as they want to do that, that will be the case. But, you know, we already have four school nurses. Right. And uh, if we had to, um, maybe if that ever happened, we could come up with a solution. Okay. So just another way to help our students and our staff and our community. Or will have restricted access to the building itself? Yes. Mm -hmm. We can close it off. Yes, we can close it off. Okay. They're going to make a door right here by the concession stand. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a door that you walk into. So that door can be locked and nobody can come in through that entrance. They'll have to come in through the outside. Okay. And we've got parking back here. Yes, sir. Okay. And Don, just so the public's aware, like you made me aware a while ago, about why we don't have to bid it. Yes. The bidding process. Will you just right. explain that for us? It's uh, less than $100,000. Okay. So we don't have to do a bidding process. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. Um, what, how long will it take them before they open? October. So I think October. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully middle of October or end of October. Okay. We're trying to get it going so, you know, our kids can have access. 
Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> all right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. All right. Next item is a uh, advertising contract with Wizard Media and a recommendation. Entertain a motion to approve so we can discuss. Motion. Motion second. Second. Motion second. Now discussion. Yeah. What we got? Yeah. What's going to be on there? <laughs> One of the things Gary tasked me with when I became the interim was to promote Ben Hill County Schools. Right. So um, I asked Cal to help me out with this process. So he met with uh, David um, Evans and um, talked to him about the actual billboard will be over by the Chinese restaurant. Is that up high? And uh, we that's one of the things that we need to decide is what do we want to have on it. Gotcha. You know, um, we have a we have a big push for like a you know we have a lot of community partners all a whole lot of community partners we do a lot of things with um, but we also have a lot of great things going on in our school system um, with our staff and um, we have initiative a reading initiative going on with L4GA um, I think one of the things he wanted to do um, back in December or January was to promote our reading you know that for everybody to be reading and, and all those type things so you know we'll, we'll come up with some proposals but we need to be able to pursue this and uh, let you all see what we're going to put on there but uh you know we we can't do anything but promote ourselves in a positive manner and, and i think that uh we have we're lacking on that in some ways we have facebook we have everything like that but when people don't use that stuff they don't really get to see the great things that we have going on so um, when he charged me with this this is what uh you know, he, he said he wanted to do, and hopefully the board wants to promote that, and I'm sure you do, because we have so many positive things that, you know, they overshadow any bad thing that we have going on. That's a good place for it. So we're looking to approve to do it, and then we'll come back with what we will do. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. You have some ideas. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, so which one of these are we approving the uh, contract with Tony's changes? Yes, ma'am. Uh, she Tony's just sent changes. those back, and when, once those are with Tony's changes, uh, mm -hmm. that's the one we'll use. Is this David Evans? David, who um, worked at uh, South Georgia Tech in Tifton. I it's it was is, it's not our David. Okay. It's not our David. David. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, okay. He's got the storage buildings out they across. I'm building the blanks. Benjamin Hill. Right? Benjamin Hill, yeah. Okay. okay. Mary That's Lisa. the best spot he's got. Yeah. That is his number one spot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It just came away. <clears throat> All right. So if you got some ideas, let us know. She went to us. So, okay. But we want it to be <clears throat> not just athletic center, but academic center, athletic center. You know, we want it to kind of wrap up our whole um, mission vision that we have. Um, because we do great things in all of our areas that we need to promote. Okay. Because usually our partners, like um, our banks and everything, put up bulletins about our af athletic right. um, yes, accomplishments. And um, and our students that are on the junior board, right. they're up. Yes, um, so this will be used for academic, academics. sponsoring academics. Anything that y'all feel Want. worthy. Okay. Okay. All those digital and, board or pardon, yes, sir. digital board? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The yes. Yeah. It's not digital. Be digital. Oh, that that would be so cool. He asked if it would be digital. We could change it every month. Or it would be vinyl. 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 So just basically, you know, we you know we put up a, a, a billboard <laughs> and it'll stay for a little it'll while. It'll stay for the yeah. entire 12. year or? It stays for 12 months, I think. Yeah. It's take 12 months. Yeah, I think that, yes, yeah, it's, it's 12 months. Generally 12 months. But if we wanted to change it at six months, the yeah. production cost, if you'll notice, is $450. Um, we'd have to pay that each time we change it. So mm -hmm. we could leave it for the year, or at six months, we could come up with something different. Okay. Okay. Is that where you're going to put your big flex? Well, I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to encompass everybody. I got you. <laughs> All right. All 
was in favor of uh, approving the contract to do this uh, billboard advertising, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? That's with the understanding that we will decide what to put on there. Right. All right. Entertain a motion to approve the first read of board policy JRB, Parents' Bill of Rights. Be your final read, Mr. Chairman. Final, yeah. final read, excuse me. Uh -huh. I can't read. Oh, that's final read, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I make a motion to approve the final read of JRB Parents Bill of Rights. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. All right. Entertain a motion to approve the final read of board policy IEDA. Unstructured break time. Motion. I second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, seem to say saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Uh, entertain a motion to approve uh, the first read of policy JRBR1, Parents Bill of Rights. Not the same thing that yeah. is. this an attachment? Yeah. No, this is something else. This is the uh, this amendment or something that goes with it. To approve yes. JRBR1. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Our motion carries. I'll stay on the table for 30 days. Entertain a motion to approve the first read of policy IKBC, that's materials harmful to minors complaint resolution process. Motion to approve IKBC. Second. Motion second, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. That will also lay for 30 days. Entertain a motion to approve first read of policy IKBB, divisive concepts complaint resolution process. I'll make a motion we approve that. Is there a second? Fails for lack of a second. <clears throat> All right, moving to our board application process to GSBA. Uh, this is for quality board. There were a lot of things on the exemplary board this year that had changed, and uh, a lot of them had to deal with uh, stuff we couldn't come up with in the time frame. Oh, and that's was, something that costs money, I bet. Well, it was some stuff we didn't know about. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, was a, it, was, it was basically like a rubric where they wanted certain things <laughs> like based on your strategic, your strategic plan oh, okay. from, 20, um, from 2018 to 2022 or 2017 to 2022. And they changed this this year and <clears throat> there was documentation that I didn't have access to. And that's why it it was quality board but we have a new strategic plan and we are looking at those uh, goals and all the things so once we get the documentation in place we'll know what we got to have for next year okay. and uh, we'll be ready to, to proceed with that and they tried to work with us Tony Arasi uh, and Debbie spent a lot of time on the phone with them trying to work this stuff out but we just couldn't couldn't put it together and there's only and they said we know it's difficult and there are very, very few boards that are going to reset. Well, we know we're so, boards. And I ain't worried about yeah, it. We're exempt for anyway, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> We've always been. Uh, but we did go ahead and submit our quality board. All right. And uh, so we'll receive that designation. <clears throat> okay. All right, upcoming events. <clears throat> We've set aside. <clears throat> Do you have to record the first? Do you have to approve oh, Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, motion to approve. Move to approve the application to join the school board association for the quality board. All right, is there a second? Second. 
Second. Motion second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. All right, uh, we have set aside the uh, dates of September 9th and 10th, Friday night and Saturday morning uh, for uh, a fall retreat. Pardon? <laughs> In Orlando. No. In Orlando. <laughs> You got time for that yet? Chamber of Commerce in New Orleans. Okay. Uh, six o'clock. Six on Friday. On Friday. What time? Saturday. Nine. We don't have. Till what time? Is, is the, the game's on the? We don't have yeah, it's on that Saturday. It's at four o'clock, isn't it? It's at seven, I think. So it's at regular time. We'll be out. <coughs> right. Oh, he's a morning game? I'm going to check, but I think it's 1 o'clock. I know it's the 10th. It's the same time as the school. So 6 p.m. I thought it was the 4th. I'm not trying. And it ends the next day. It's Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning, he says. It'll be Saturday morning. Do what? It'll be Saturday morning at 2. Our football game? In Brunswick? Yeah. yeah. The team will be leaving on Friday. We'll work some out. So what time do we get out on Saturday? When we, when we looked at these dates, the game was it. It was on something I saw at 4 o'clock. That's the reason these dates were look good. Anyway, something has changed. So Let's meet Friday night and we'll see what we can, okay. see what we need to do. Okay. Okay, gotcha. We may get through Friday night. <clears throat> If we don't, we'll meet some other time. Anyway, Friday night from six, we'll say six to ten, we'll have uh, food prepared for us. Right. We'll talk fast. Maybe we'll get through. <laughs> don't our, ask any questions. Hmm? Don't ask any questions. Our next regular <laughs> meeting is September thirteenth. Our winter conference is. Uh, 30th through the 1st, but actually we have our training date on the 29th. Is that right? New board member. New board member. Not no, our training is, just, excuse me, our training is the 30th. On the 30th. Okay. Our training is on the 30th, and the conference is 1st and 2nd. Okay. That's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay. Probably go up on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. All right. When is new board orientation? They don't come with go at the Hasn't same time. Right? They go in November. November sometime. Football games at one o'clock. One o'clock. One o'clock. Okay. Thank you. All right, after a brief recess, uh, I'll make a motion we go into executive session to discuss personnel and property. And uh, I'll make a motion we do that. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Uh, we'll be in